the fans make their way into the O.Co. Coliseum in Oakland as the Red Sox make their only visit of the year to the Oakland A's to play game one of a three-game series. Welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, and welcome to Red Sox Baseball. This lengthy road trip for the Red Sox continues. They dropped two out of three to the Toronto Blue Jays, and now they arrive here taking on an Oakland A's team that has now lost five games in a row. The pitching matchups, well, in this series, it begins tonight with Rick Orsillo, who's trying to get his fourth win of the year, matched up against Scott Casimir. He has really had quite a bounce back year again this year, 2-1 and one with a 2.75 earned run average. Masterson against Drew Pomerantz in the middle game of the three-game series. Then we play day baseball, and this is going to be a tough matchup for the Red Sox. Sonny Gray, the ace for the Oakland A's, 4-0 and with a nifty 1.67 earned run average against Wade Miley. We welcome in Steve Lyons. And Steve, for the Red Sox going up against this Oakland A's team, trying to take advantage of a team that's not playing very good baseball. Yeah, they're really scuffling right now. As you mentioned, they've lost five in a row. They're one of the worst defensive teams in all of baseball. They've committed 33 errors, and that has really hurt them. And you talked about the pitching matchup. Outside of Sonny Gray on Wednesday, who's a huge huge roadblock. These other two guys, Kazmir and Pomerantz, have struggled. It's a good chance for this Red Sox offense to kind of continue doing what they did in the last game in Toronto, kind of storm into Oakland and see if you can't get a sweep here. First things are first. Get this one tonight against Kazmir. Red Sox have Shane Victorino back in the lineup for Boston. He's active. The Red Sox and Oakland A's from Oakland. There's Lake Merritt just outside the ballpark. We're back with the first pitch right after this. DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of your Boston Red Sox. Toyota's website for deals by a Toyota.com. Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. The Oakland A's fans are here early per usual. Out of the parking lot somewhere around 2.30 every day as they get ready like it is an NFL game here in Oakland as the Red Sox coming to Oakland for their first and only visit of the year and begin this three-game series tonight against an athletics team that has really struggled. They've lost their last five straight games in the bottom of the AL West heading into this series and are 12 and 21. The Red Sox making their way from Toronto here last night. And the Red Sox are beginning the West Coast part of this trip with three here in Oakland against the A's and then four against Seattle. As the Red Sox have no off days on this road trip. And uh, tonight begins this series against an A's team that has really struggled, Steve. Yeah, and you'd like to say, wow, look at this Oakland team after how good they've been over the last few seasons. They've only won 12 games so far this year, but the Red Sox have only won 14. So it's time for the Red Sox to 
kind of turn things around. It's tough to do that on a long road trip, but they're not necessarily playing against teams, especially this one, that's dazzling anybody right now. Well, the Oakland A's have taken the field, so check out the Red Sox starting lineup. It's brought to you by your Eastern Hyundai dealers. They're leading it off for the Red Sox is Mookie Betts in center field with Dustin Pedroia at second base, batting second. David Ortiz, the DH, with Hanley Ramirez in left field. Mike Napoli at first base with Pablo Sandoval at third base. Shane Victorino in right bat seventh with Xander Bogarts at shortstop eighth. And Blake Swihart does the catching in bats ninth. Tonight's A starting pitcher is presented by your New England Nissan dealers, Scott Kazmir. Making his seventh start of the year, two and one with a 2.75 earned run average. 40 strikeouts to 12 walks, and opponents hitting under 200 against Kazmir. At home in two starts here at the O.Co. Coliseum, he has not given up a run in 14 innings with 17 strikeouts along the way. Tonight's athletics defense is brought to you by DraftKings. Around the infield, Lowry, Simeon, Sogard, and Ike Davis over at first base. In the outfield, old buddy Coco Crisp. Burns is in center field. Reddick out in right. And the battery, Kazmir and Volk. Well, the umpire and crew tonight, Vic Carapaz has a plate calling the balls and strikes. And Larry Van over the crew chief at first base. Ron Culp is at second base. And Brian Knight, the umpire at third. Where available, this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. And rookie Bats ready to lead it off here for the Red Sox in the top of the first inning. Kazmir ready to work, and the first pitch of the ball game is in there for strike one, and we're underway. First pitch. Kazmir got off to a good start with back-to-back -back wins and then have three straight no decisions and a loss. He said his last time out he didn't have his good cutter. Where have we heard that before? Mookie Betts coming in at 242 on the year. Five homers. 18 runs batted in. Woo! And a good pitch for a strike on the corner. As Kazmir had one and two. On the ground to third base, backing up a step was Laurie. His throw is off the mark, but there is Ike Davis and is standing into the runner to make that catch for the first out as Mookie Betts has retired 5-3. to three. Well, The weather conditions are brought to you by Benjamin Moore. 58 degrees to get it started here tonight. Breeze out to right at 19 miles per hour, and the forecast partly cloudy, but right now nothing but blue skies above here at O.Co. Coliseum. One down for Dustin Pedroia. You love saying O. Co. Coliseum. You know, you know, what's really funny is the first couple of years it became O. Co. Coliseum. I couldn't say it. So now and you're so on now, top of it. Now that I've been able to, to grasp it, I like to run it out there as much as I possibly can. You didn't like Oakland County Coliseum. I was okay with that, but then they stopped calling that never, it. That, that, yeah, that <laughs> won't fit on a T-shirt. You know? <laughs> yeah. You had Oakland Alameda. You had all Oakland kinds of Alameda County Coliseum. Yeah. Is right. But O.Co. Coliseum, I can now say, so I will. I guess they're one of the ones still in business. Throw it down on the count, one and two, with one out here in the first inning. This is not your father, Scott Kazmir, 31 years old now. He's learned how to pitch a little bit. He used to be inside, inside, inside. Throw the fastball in, throw that slider back leg to the righties now he'll change up away go to this fastball away for it pops it up foul back and out of play became a much more complete pitcher when he decided to use both sides of the plate this season 56 percent of the time fastballs breaking ball 25 percent and change up at 19 percent Year in his first year of the Oakland A's, a 15 game winner. It was 15 and 9 a year ago. He did not work out in Los Angeles at all. The Angels, the only full season he had out there was 2010, and he was 9 and 15 that year. The DRA close to 6. 
after so many good years in Tampa Bay when he broke into the big leagues. Here's a pop up foul ground and back comes Volt towards the screen and will not have a play. Into the first row behind the screen. It's hard to hit a foul ball here. That ends up in the seats. There is so much foul territory that certainly hurts the offensive numbers for the Oakland A's and anybody who plays here. He had just enough on that one to get it up over the screen and into the front row of the seats. Always the possibility here that you could take two bases on an errant throw in the first base. Yep. Keep running. Troya goes chasing after that pitch away at 92. And the first strikeout of the night for Scott Kazmir. There's the real difference in Kazmir as we talked about used to throw in hard all the time. Now he's not afraid to throw that fastball work it to the other side of the plate. Gets Pedroia chase and it looked like Pedroia might have been kind of cheating inside and had a tougher time reaching that. So two down here in the first inning and it brings up David Ortiz. And Sox DH at 235 to start the night. The shift and this ground ball right to the second baseman Sogard who is in short right. And the Sox are down in order in the first inning. The Oakland A's are coming up. First inning in tonight's Red Sox starting pitchers presented by your local New England Audi dealers. Rick Porcello on the mound, his seventh start of the year, three and two, with a 4.38 earned run average, 35 Ks to 10 walks, and opponents hitting at 250 against Porcello. First batter he faces Billy Burns, getting it off and in center field. He's been leading off with Coco Crisp now batting second. Burns in center. Chris now playing in left. So Burns is going to take it over. Coco Chris spot not only defensively but in the lineup as well. Yeah Burns has been leading off but this is the first time they've both been in the lineup where Burns has let off and Crisp has hit second. So you're, you're right about that. You're starting to see maybe a little bit of a changing of the guard. Coco Chris been around a long time now in left field was perennially their center fielder. Coco's had a tough start of the year, 0 for 15 so far. 1 2 to Burns. And it's strike three. A good start for Porcello. Let's check out the Oakland A's starting nine. It is brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. Just saw Billy Burns. He is in center field with Coco Crisp in left. 
Josh Reddick in right field with Billy Butler, the former Kansas City Royal, the DH. Stephen Vogt does the catching with Ike Davis, the former Matt at first base. Brett Laurie at third base with Marcus Simeon at shortstop. And Eric Sogard at second base, bats ninth. One out here in the first inning, and it brings up Coco Crisp. Batting out of that two spot now for the Oakland A's. Sold for 15 to begin the year. Panda comes a couple of steps in on the grass at third base. Chris always a threat to bunt or push the ball the other way. Goes to left where Hanley Ramirez is there to make the catch two down. Well, let's talk a little Red Sox defense brought to you by Southwest Airlines. And there you have it across the infield. Sandoval, Bogarts, Pedroia, and Napoli over at first in the outfield today. Ramirez on left, Mookie Betts in center, and Shane Victorino fresh off the DL playing in right field. Like Swihart behind the ditch, and Rick Porcello coming off a of back to back stellar starts, looking to go three in a row here. Uh, two down here in the bottom of the first inning for former Red Sox outfielder Josh Reddick. Back to playing pretty well, a 316 average coming into this series, five home runs, and 22 runs batted in. He's been Handling an injured wrist the last couple of seasons that has kind of zapped his power a little bit, but always plays well here at ODOT Co Coliseum. Struggling lately, two for his last 23 at the plate. A check swing foul over by the on deck batter, and he's got a piece of Billy Butler. And you look at his numbers too, hitting a 316, still with that two for 23. He was. Really off to a great start. In fact, he had a 12 game hitting streak. It's the longest of anybody in the American League at the time. Reaches out and has got a base hit here, taking it the other way. So a two out single for Josh Reddick. And the year in the DL, the strained right oblique. It has a two out single here and it brings up Billy Butler. Billy Butler. 254 average for Butler. Three homers and 16 runs batted in. And former Kansas City Royal. Eight for his last 61, hitting at 131 in the past 15 games. Yeah, that's always hit the Red Sox well. A career 316 average against Boston. One of the stranger signs of the offseason. You look at the Oakland A's don't usually go out and throw around a lot of money for free agent signings. And gave Butler some pretty good cash to come here, pride him away from Kansas City and anybody else. So far, he hasn't really produced the way they'd like him to. He's hit too many balls on the ground. Look at the hits leaders. Look at 271 last year at 151 games for Kansas City. And have the power that he once did hit 29 home runs in 2012 but last year down to nine home runs I think the A's were thinking that last year was a little bit of an offseason after the year that you mentioned where he hit nearly 30 we thought maybe he could come here to Oakland and do that type of damage so far it hasn't panned out Talking about the last two outings for Rick Porcello, trying to follow it up with a third very good outing. Well, his outing spent in the American League East, beating Toronto seven innings, one run, and then Tampa Bay seven innings and no runs. Butler reaches out, it's a ground ball right side as Pedroia throws out Butler. That will conclude the first inning. Done with one tonight from Oakland without a score.
Napoli and Pablo Sandoval to bat against Scott Kazmir. One, two, three, first inning for Kazmir. Next in a strikeout as well. Only hitting a 288 coming in. No pitches, a swing and a miss up and away. You know, Don, it's funny when the General manager of a ball club makes a trip. Maybe Ben Sherrington just wanted to come to the West Coast, see Oakland, show up in Seattle. Then all the buzz starts going, and oh, Casimir's pitching tonight. Maybe they're looking for a lefty starter. Maybe they don't want to trade away a lot of prospects to get a guy like Cole Hamels or Zimmerman. Or maybe the Oakland A's will struggle just enough to think about getting rid of a guy like Casimir. Maybe Ben Sherrington just wanted to come and see his team play. <laughs> Miss for Hanley and it evens it two and two. And Napoli, then Pablo Sandoval expected here in the second inning. Talking to Hanley today about the ball he hit yesterday. I told him he hit it too hard. He goes, Yeah, because I should have missed it. Ended up going one for eight in that series against the Blue Jays. Turn to the Red Sox lineup on Saturday, the first time since May the 4th. And there is ball four. The Red Sox have their first base runner of the night. Let's send it down to Garen Austin. Garen. Thanks, John. You know, big sports news coming out of New England today with Tom Brady getting a four game suspension and the Patriots having to pay $1 million and lose two draft picks in the Deflate Gate controversy. David Ortiz said they uh, messed up on that decision, and manager John Farrell said he didn't know the ins and outs, but it seemed like a really steep fine. Don, Steve, when we asked Farrell what he, uh, if the Red Sox would ever cheat, he jokingly said, baseballs are solid. Can't deflate a baseball, apparently. That suspension for Brady and the punishment for the Patriots is a joke. What an overreaction. And, you know, the crazy thought that they were almost basing his suspension based on their PED suspension. Why would that even come into play at all? The same type of punishment. That makes no sense at all. Taking away a draft pick, a number one draft pick. That's the part that surprised me. Was the and then a number four of the year. Yeah. Come on. Because a ball was under, under deflated, like every quarterback doesn't do the same thing. Well, you know, there's there's a there's a nationwide semi hatred to the Patriots because they win too much. Josh Reddick out of right field reels it in on Mike Napoli for the first out of the second inning. So one down. Hanley Ramirez back to the bag at first brings up Pablo Sandoval. Think about the penalty for. For Tom Brady himself, four game suspension without pay. Not sure what Brady, Brady, Brady makes, probably about a million a game, somewhere in that area, probably more. And just because he already has a lot of money, that doesn't mean that that's fair. It's a hefty chunk. Terrible decision. And here is Pablo Sandoval, got his world championship ring here last night. He arrived in the lobby last night. There were several of the San Francisco Giants. Hierarchy there waiting for him. He was ring as he was handed to get in about last night, about 10:30. He got his championship ring, third one. Yeah, including Bruce Bochy. Yes. And Larry Bear, the president of the ball club. That was a nice gesture on their part to show up. It really was. Be there waiting for him. He knew he was getting it. He didn't know who was bringing it to him though. They thought they were going to put it in a box and <laughs> send it courier pigeon or what? <laughs> No pitch is going to ride inside. Casimir wanted it, but he falls behind here 2 0. Oh. the ball hitting at 3 0 6. Three homers and 14 runs batted in. I've settled, I've settled back down. You okay? Back down. Yeah, I was a little hot into the collar, collar about that. Four games to spend. A million bucks they find craft too. Come on. On the ground, left side. The Simeon trying to start it. The second for one. On the first for two. Double play. Ends the top of the second inning. You didn't get half done without a score from Oakland.
Stephen Vogt, Mike Davis, and Brett Laurie to bat in the inning. He's in the first pitch in there for a strike from Porcello. Give up a two out big hit to Josh Reddick. Getting Billy Butler to ground out in the first inning. Stephen Vogt off to a terrific start. 340 on the season, eight homers, and 26 runs batted in. Leaders of this club for the Oakland A's in everything. Ground towards shortstop and Bogarts pulls out vote for the first out of the inning. Red Sox group tickets start at just twenty dollars. How easy is it to get twenty of your family and friends together? Visit RedSox.com/groups for more information. One out here in the second inning for Ike Davis. Chance of the year for Red Sox fans to get out here to see the Red Sox in Oakland. In Seattle, the other time the Red Sox come west will be only to Anaheim to take on the Angels. Part of the trip that will include the Houston Astros, and the Astros right now are leading the American League West. I'm not sure anybody predicted that to take place, but a young talent on that team. Only coming to fruition. We'll see how long it will last. Like Davis, former Bats, who hits it 280 on the season. Jumps back out of the way of a pitch down and in. Eight for his last 42 is Ike Davis over the last 12 games. Bring up on deck Brett Laurie, the former Toronto Blue Jay. You see a lot of swings like that out of Mike Davis. Always been kind of a sucker for a breaking ball down and in. And things didn't work out well with him for the Mets. He did 233 in 143 games between the Mets and Pirates. Little strikeout looking. Didn't like it at all, but it grabs the corner. Second strikeout for Porcello. Two down. Good running fastball for Porcello in the early going. He's got two strikeouts with that Yahoo fastball. Throw it at the belt buckle of a left-handed hitter and watch it run right back to the plate. Two down here in the second inning. It brings up Brett Laurie. We have 254 coming into tonight's action. And a deal that came from Toronto here to the Oakland A's. We just saw the other side of that Josh Donaldson, who is terrific right now for the Blue Jays and played a very good third base while the Red Sox were there this weekend. Yes, he did. Kind of asked around and asked people around here if they were happy with the move. They also got a bunch of other pieces in that trade. A couple minor league pitchers that are supposed to be pretty darn good. A minor league shortstop of the future who's an A ball right now, but they like him a lot. And Laurie's no. Slouch either. They call him maybe the best athlete on this ball club. Primary players involved. Lori. Last year the Blue Jays hitting at 247. Injured a lot. So staying on the field. And last year for Oakland, Donaldson with 29 home runs. 25th pitch from Marcello. Opposite field. Base hit out into right center. Torino cuts it off. And Lori aboard here with two down. Second hit of the night for the Athletics. Phillies ticket, the official Red Sox ticket partner, has the best seats at the lowest prices to all the games at Fenway. Oh, the 200% guarantee. Right now, Ace Ticket has special savings on all Red Sox games, including the Yankees. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. Two down with Brett Laurie at first base. Here's Marcus Simeon, shortstop for the A's. Home run game yesterday for the Athletics, and now five on the year. First two homer game of his career yesterday. And there are solo home runs off King, King Felix. Felix. <laughs> Felix Hernandez. So I got something for you. Swing and a miss there. Evens it count at one and one. Simmons, a local product, went to St. Mary's here in El Cerrito, California, went to Cal. His father was a football player at Cal. 
It's a fly ball to center field. Well, that's going back in that big center. He'll reel it in. Back onto the warning track by the 400 marker to reel it in. Through two, no score from Oakland. Top half of the third inning back at O.Co. Coliseum. No score as Shane Victorino returns to the Red Sox lineup tonight. Five for 35. Getting at 143 coming in. Homers and two runs batted in. A couple of games with the Portland Sea Dogs. He's saying that it is still pretty cold in Portland, Maine. He was there for the weekend playing a couple of games, rehabbing. A little chilly in Boston today, yes. too. There's a pop-up. Foul ground back comes Stephen Volt. This time he may have a chance and he does. Right in front of the screen. And we're the first out of the third inning. We'll check back in with Garen. Thanks, Don. Tonight's poll question is presented by the Scion TC. Which team has been the biggest surprise this season in baseball? Text your answer to 536-536. Sox 1 for Houston. Sox 2 for Oakland. Sox 3 for the New York Mets. Or Sox 4 for the New York Yankees. Message and data rates may apply. Text help for info and visit Nesson.com slash terms for terms and conditions and privacy policy. Don, Steve, I don't know about you, but seeing Houston on top of the ALS is a surprise to me. Yeah, it just looks kind of strange based on where Houston's been, so I'm going to stick with Houston, I think. I'll stick with Houston, too, and the caveat to that is half the people don't even know they're an American League team. <laughs> That's the other thing. <laughs> this one is fouled down the right field line out of play. Everybody gets to know. They've just been lost for a while. <laughs> you know, everybody got to meet Jose Altuve last year. I think That's oh, yeah. the first piece of the puzzle, really, for the Houston Astros and turning around that team. Pretty good player. One down here in the third inning, Sander Bogarts. Swinging a foul back, clenching off the glove there of Vogt. Look at the Red Sox lineup up and down the lineup. They really have some guys that need to turn it up a notch. A lot of guys struggling just on a daily basis to get hits. The team's got to score some more runs. A guy like Porcello is going to go out there. Already looks like he's settling into a decent start. You got to score some runs for these guys. That's why our number nine man waiting on deck. The Sox have had one base runner so far. Hanley Ramirez with a leadoff walk in the second inning, but. He was quickly erased on a 6 4 3 double play. Bogart's 
offense defensively has been pretty good this year. Really good. He's not committed an error in his last 22 games. And it appears to have more range this year than he had last year. Just more confidence. I think his footwork is a lot better. He's put in a lot of work to try to get better out there. And it's worked for him. He's got the second best fielding percentage of any shortstop in the American League right now. And last year at this time, nobody would ever have believed that. Made the comment the other night that we don't talk about his defense anymore, which is a great thing because last year that's all anyone could talk about. He's not a shortstop. We got to get him out of there. Go play third base. Get Steven Drew. A little bit low that time. You'll see a ninth pitch in this at bat. So Brian Butterfield, the guy who worked with him a great deal in spring training again and continues to work with him every day. Ground ball to his counterpart at shortstop, Marcus Simeon throws him out at first base, two down. First time through, has been pretty good for Kazmir, the number nine man, Blake Swihart, coming up. Seems like offensively right nine now for the Red Sox, there's not a lot of guys in the lineup that hit next to each other that are consistently hitting the ball. Have one guy hit and the next guy's not. The next guy after that might be hitting and the next guy's not. We can't really. String together a few hits to get a rally going. I ball to short right field. Josh Reddick coming in and calling and catching the final out of the top of the third inning. Red Sox go quietly in the third. No score through two and a half. Follow Nesson at Instagram.com slash Nesson. Into the bottom of the third inning. Jeremy Mike Napoli. And uh, apparently <laughs> it's made her available if uh, Mike Napoli's interested. <laughs> yeah, I think that happens a lot. Bottom of the third inning, Eric Sogard leading it off here. For a strike, Sogar to be followed by Burns and Crisp here in the third inning. Boston based Daily Fantasy Company, DraftKings.com, the official daily fantasy partner of your Boston Red Sox, is giving out $300 million in cash prizes. Enter promo code Nesson to play for free. Sogard has picked it up offensively lately. Seven for his last 21 and 333 for the last six games. Also off another. Down one and two. 
Sogard was the guy that they were basically thinking was going to be the utility player on this team. And of course, when Ben Zobras got the knee injury, he's kind of been forced into action a little bit more regularly. They're not expecting any power out of him. Out there, get your base hits and play some D. No, in fact, he has a 151 game formula streak going <laughs> right now. Yep. Bounce in for ball three. Longest stretch by an athletic second baseman since Spook Jacobs had a 168 game streak from April of 1954 through May of 1956. That's back on second base when we're supposed to hit home runs anyway. Sit on the one. You know there's 20 people sitting on their couch right now saying you jinxed it down. It's gonna go He's deep gonna go right deep now. Right now. Never fails. Oh yeah. You believe in jinxes? Sometimes I do. I don't. Because I've done it a lot. Like I'll say it and it'll happen. This guy's that's never had a, a grand jinx. slam and then bam he hits it. I, mean, I can't tell you times that's happened. This is in the air to left field. This is gonna stay in the yard, fortunately, as Hanley Ramirez makes the catch for the first out of the inning. I only believe in good karma. I only believe that you could say something is gonna happen and it might. Not that it won't, and it does. That's because you're such a positive person. That's you why. got that right. One down for Billy Burns, who struck out looking in the first inning. If I had that kind of power, man, I would just be finding other things to do. With your power? With my jinxing ability. Three strikeouts tonight for Porcello. Billy Burns, one. Ike Davis, the other. Burns is kind of a unique situation. When we look at the Red Sox, and there's two different guys on that team that have stopped switch hitting. Both Daniel Nava and Victorino. This is a guy who just picked up switch hitting. It's a natural right-handed hitter. He just started switch hitting when he was with the Nationals right before they traded him over here. It's a hard thing to do. Just uh, I think I'll start hitting lefty for a while. The major league level, tough. Victorino did it for a lot of years. He stopped, he said, mostly because hitting left-handed is harsher on his body. It was made him more injury prone. Shane Victorino abandoning switch hitting. I think only right-handed now. It started with the four injuries that he had last year. So fouled off to the left out of play. Foul outside of first base. Porcello's throwing the kitchen sink at this kid here in this at bat, and he's hanging in there, fouling off pitches inside, fouling off balls away. Struck him out in his first at bat on a high tailing fastball, making him work for this one. Burns started the year on the major league roster, did not play in the first two games, and then was sent back to Triple A Nashville. There were 20 games in center field with Nashville with the Sounds. In the 315 before getting called back up again. Doing what a leadoff guy is supposed to do. We'll see a lot of pitches, foul off pitches, work the count. to get that ball in the air but can't get there and one hops him and beating it out of the bunt single with good speed as Billy Burns looked up and he was right down the line. What do you see about 10 pitches in that at bat and then tries to bunt with two strikes. How about that? You don't see that ever. It wasn't a great attempt either. Didn't have to be great because no one's expecting it. Just had to make sure it stays fair because if that ball goes foul of course that's a strikeout but instead it's a base hit. Third hit of the night for the A's with one out of the inning. Here's Coco Crisp. A big lead at first base for Burns. A 
Porcello noticed and fires over to first. You're right, Don. That was a great job by Porcello right there. Was really holding the ball for a long time. Then finally decided to throw over. Burns has stolen a couple bases, been caught once. Started and stopped as this one gets away. And he'll get second base. Chris Bad showed Bunt, pulled it back, and the ball gets by Swihart to the backstop. And now Burns into scoring position with one down. One of the tough things for a catcher when a hitter squares around a bunt is you have to almost be on the move. You're kind of coming out of your crouch. And Swihart almost forgot to catch that one. He thought maybe Chris would bunt it. He didn't. And it ended up back at the wall. And a nice play by Swihart that time, sliding to his right. They have charged Porcello with a wild pitch. Could have been a pass ball. Yeah, it, it definitely could have been a pass ball. As I said, sometimes, you know, the catcher, he's, he's worried about the guy bunting. He knows that he might have to go field the bunt. So you're kind of popping out of your crouch, getting on the move. Everything a little bit more difficult back there. For Porcello, who slowed it up with a runner at second. Now, ground ball right side, softly hit as Pedroia throws out Chris. Burns takes third base. And now, two down in the inning. So first base runner for either side to reach third base in this game. And it brings up Josh Reddick. Reddick with a single in the first inning, one of three hits so far for the A's. In there for strike one. And it was getting the arms out of the way and it picks up the corner. He didn't think so. Look out. That one straightens him up, kind of late to react to the 91 mile an hour fastball. Good purpose pitch right there, run it up and in. You see Reddick all over the plate trying to get himself some extra room in there. Now that opens up the inside and he can go back out away from Reddick. In and Swihart able to grab it on a hop. Saved a run right there and a ball in the dirt. And we just saw a ball get past Swihart into the wall. And then we saw him make two excellent plays on balls in the dirt. So he does have good footwork back there. He's extremely quick for a catcher. So looking to put away Reddick here. A little bit high for ball four. And there's the first walk given up by Porcello of his outing. So first and third now, two down in the inning, and Billy Butler coming up. The fall of the Red Sox all season in 2015 with the MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is the up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and more. Again, MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Two outs runners at first and third here for the A's. And the 
Butler grounded out to Dustin Pedroia at second base in the first inning. The numbers for Butler against Porcello coming in. Just the chance to face him a lot in the American League Central. Butler with Kansas City and Porcello with the Detroit Tigers. Takes him the other way for a base hit into right. From third comes Burns as the Oakland A's take a 1 0 lead. A two out RBI single for Billy Butler. Butler doing exactly what you should do in that situation. You see him just inside out the ball. It's a pretty good pitch to really hammer if he's looking to juice one to left. But in that situation, just trying to. Get the ball into the outfield, drive in a run, not drive the ball out of the park. Josh Reddick took second on the base hit to right, so two on, two down. And Stephen Vogt now the batter. Rounded out to shortstop in the second inning. And he takes strike one. Games go hitting at 321. They said that this guy's their MVP. Pretty good catch and throw by the guy behind the plate. Hitting everything in sight. This guy last year began the year at Triple A Sacramento. He's promoted to Oakland June the first, then spent the remainder of the season with the A's. Oh, it's a high fly ball to right field. Back goes Shane Victorino towards the track, and he'll get there to make the running catch that ends the inning. The A's strike first, take a 1 0 lead through three. Bankers are for you days, nights, and double headers. To see why we've been named the number one SBA lender in New England, visit easternbank.com slash small bids. It's on to the fourth inning. The Oakland A's have grabbed a run on top one to nothing as Mookie Betts leads it off. That's Pedroia and Ortiz here in the fourth inning. Has at 40 pitches through three plus innings. Strike two, 0 oh and two. Okay. Rounded out to Brett Laurie at third base in the first inning. I like what I'm seeing the difference in Casimir from the guy he used to be. A much more complete pitcher now. Just kind of got.
got away with his talent for a long time just. Busting guys in and breaking that. Slider off down and in now he's everywhere. Back at him and a nice play at the top of the hill. Throws low but it's in time to get Mookie Betts. Mookie trying to go right back up the middle. Casimir a little snow cone and then oh he just maybe took a little bit too much time on that throw. So six in a row now retired by Casimir. One down here in the fourth inning. The home numbers for Casimir off the charts coming into this start tonight and it continues. As he is not allowed to hit here so three and a third innings. Only base runner for the Red Sox, Hanley Ramirez, with a walk to lead off the second inning. That's Pedroia, it's hardy on that. 0 and 2. Now on the right field line, making its way foul. Turning home here, lots of uh, friends and family. Anytime he comes out to Oakland, nearby Woodland, California, is where he was born and grew up. He resides in Chandler, Arizona, during the off season. Pedroia chased that pitch his last time up. Not going to do it twice in a row. Roy stays alive as he fouls it back to the screen. Don Orsillo, Steve Lyons, and Garen Austin with you from O.Co. Coliseum in Oakland, California. The first of a three game series between the Red Sox and the Oakland A's. Let's get a run in the bottom of the third inning. On an RBI single by Billy Butler. Oakland on top, one to nothing. 50th pitch of the night for Casimir. And Bedroya will take it down and in. A good at bat here for Dustin Bedroya right now against Casimir. We've seen a few of those battles so far in tonight's ballgame. A bunch of hitters taking it deep. Lots of pitches. Second straight bat that, that bat that Bedroya has seen in eight pitches. Foul it off. He'll see a ninth. Maybe he'll drop a butt down now. A la Billy Burns. Yeah. So we'll do that yeah, in the third inning. Lines it foul down the right field line out of play. He's it back going into double digits. Great play down the line by a Red Sox fan, I'm pretty sure. That's why you bring your glove to the ballpark. Look at that. Look at all the gloves down there. They know they're going to see some action. It's pretty good extension right there. All four, and Pedroia works the walk. Second walk given up by Kazmir of his outing. Great at bat by PD. Not only working the walk, but seeing all those pitches, forcing Kazmir to get that pitch count up. One out, one on, and David Ortiz coming up. Look at his chart here as far as hit direction. 35% to left, 35% to center. You got to remember the shift always in place on the right side, but 30% going in that, direct, in that direction. Maybe they'll and stop against, shifting. Uh, left handed pitching. Swing and a miss. Big swing there. Really kind of a modified shift now. Simeon starting to go over to the other side, the second base side of second base, but he was playing pretty much right up the middle on that first pitch. In the 
the dirt. David not chasing. He's serving the suspension. Bumping the umpire John Tampain earlier this month and then serving the suspension on Friday night game one of the series against Toronto. One for seven in the series against the Jays. And fouls this one off to the left out of play. Sox still looking for their first hit of the night. With one out here in the fourth inning. And foul off to the left. Nothing else driving up the pitch count here is Scott Kashmir. A lot of them in this inning. And the Ramirez is waiting on deck. That down and away. I feel very deep on Ortiz. Especially in right field, Josh Reddick, Billy Burns out there in center. This is a ballpark that plays very, very big at nighttime. Talking about the numbers that Casimir. Throws up there when he's playing in this ballpark. There are times when you can challenge hitters. Go ahead, throw it out over the middle of the plate, hit it to center field as far as you want. It's 400 feet out there at nighttime. Ball doesn't travel that well. Call. Venture requesting at that time. Gonna work hard here in the fourth inning. One out walk for Pedroia. Now a battle against Ortiz. 60th pitch of the night for Kashmir coming up. Just a check on first. Pedroia's lead was not terribly large, but he gets back to the bat. Fouls off another. You we'll see an eighth pitch in this at bat. Pedroia has looking like he's having a little trouble picking up Casimir's delivery over there. If he was totally comfortable that he knew where Casimir was going, I'd say go ahead, put him in motion. I don't think he has a real good read on his move, and Ortiz strikes out a fair amount. There he there goes, goes this time. And a liner into center field. A base hit for Ortiz. So Pedroia just keeps on going. He will go to third. They're going to wave him around now. Butterfield sending it towards the plate, and the throw is going to be not in time as it gets away. Pedroia retouches the base just to be sure. And up to second base goes Ortiz. So the Red Sox making something happen, starting Pedroia, and they tie the game one to one. A little surprised to see Butterfield send him there at that. Looked yep. like a good throw would have got him. But I, I love the aggressive play here, and I think Butterfield sent him because of his turn at second base. P's going, but watch how quickly he comes around second. Great speed right there. Now it looks like, hey, I'm more than halfway to third. Let's go. Keep him going. Sends him all the way in. It's going to take a good throw to get him. It skips in there. Just a great turn, and he had a full head of steam going in, and Butterfield said, why not? This team has to start playing a little bit more like that. It's been tough for them to do it because they haven't had any leads. Tough error handed out there. They charge an error to the shortstop on the throw. Yeah, you have to because if the ball skips away like that, it's almost like when an outfielder throws a ball to try to cut a runner down at third base and the ball hits the runner in the back and skips away and a guy gets up and goes home, you get an error out there in the outfield. Tough error, but got to give it to someone. David Ortiz ends up at second base as Hanley Ramirez takes a pitch down and in. Walked in the second inning. Do credit Ortiz with an RBI. This is where we were talking about before stringing some hits together. PD gets on with a great walk. 
Then Ortiz drills one up the middle. Now, Hanley Ramirez. Taxing inning so far for Scott Kazmir, and he's not out of it yet. Good young on the left, Bob Melvin on the right. So, uh, the former Red Sox pitching coach. Kurt Young was there in some tumultuous times. A soft ballot swing there that time from Ramirez. You don't see that often, and I think sometimes he gets that leg kick started just a little early. We always talk about him starting his leg kick literally before the pitcher delivers the pitch. But when a guy's in a stretch, I think it's just a little bit harder for Hanley to time when he's supposed to start get, getting that going. Watch how early that front leg comes off the ground. What he's always been really great at is just hovering, just sits up there. Ralph Macchio, <laughs> he can just stand up there and wait the for you. Kid. Yeah, and then he pounces on it. The Karate Kid, sure. Reference. Swing and a miss, and Hanley strikes out. Tough at bat for Ramirez there against Kashmir. Two down. See, there's the big leg kick, and now the changeup gets him out in front. Wax on, wax off. Oh, yeah. The big insurance, great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. What was the move there? He's on one. He's on yeah, one foot. It. The, the crane. The crane. That's, that's Hanley. He's got the crane going on before he unleashes that hat. Two down of the inning, a run in. Ortiz at second base, and Mike Napoli the batter. Mike wind out to the right fielder Josh Reddick in the second inning. That's high call now as Vogt jumps up and heads out. We'll talk to Casimir here. Brief conversation. Casimir did all the talking. <laughs> He's saying, Help me, Mr. Wizard. Strike call. Casimir doing most of his best work. On the outer half of the plate with fastballs and changeups to right handed hitters, something that he never really did much of before. Napoli with a big three run home run yesterday. There's 20 career home runs and 50 RBIs against the Oakland A's. This is time spent as a member of the Angels, facing the A's a lot in the American League West. And his time with Texas for that matter as well. Yep. The AL West. Most of his big numbers against this ball club. I think doesn't he have like 50 RBIs against the Yankees too or another ball club. Head of the count now two and one. Pablo Sandoval waiting on deck. A run in here for the Red Sox to tie the game and chance to add on with David Ortiz at second base. Important for Ortiz to get a, a decent secondary lead. You see him at the bottom of the screen there. A lot of visits here between Vogt and Kashmir in the inning. Two outs. Neither of those middle infielders are going to pay a lot of attention to David. We all know that not the fastest guy in the world out there, so he's got to get that big secondary lead and 
in order to ensure that he's going to score on a base hit, even with two outs. Three and one. After this long inning for Casimir, let's we'll see how much confidence he has on a three and one changeup. To Napoli down and away in a hitter's count. Misses. Second walk of the inning allowed by Kazmir. Send it down to Garen. Thanks, John. You know, it was during the Red Sox A Series finale here last year that Mike Napoli did something that had not been done since Rico Petroselli did it in 1967. He homered and stole home in the same game. It happened in the third inning last June 22nd. The Napoli saw the opportunity as part of a double steal and went for it and did what he called a ninja move to slide into home. Then in the fifth inning, he had a home run. After the game, Napoli told reporters that he never thought he'd steal home. Napoli aboard now. Runners at first and second. Two down and Pablo Sandoval the batter. We'll take ball one. You ever stolen home in your career? Uh, not that I remember. No. I think you probably remember. Unless it was the back end of. Well, or unless it yeah, was like, like that. that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that may have been. The double steal. Yeah. Broken play. Keep going. Sandoval goes lunging. Into a double play back in the second inning. The second look at Scott Kazmir tonight. Nice to see the Sox offense pick up a clutch base hit with a couple guys out and a couple guys on. The ball has been baffled on back to back pitches. From the right side has had a great deal of trouble. Two for his last 29. The swing just has no symmetry. It's, it's not like nectar. It's like he's chopping wood. His top hand is really dominant in his right hand swing, like he's trying to throw that top hand out over the pitch. On the ground down the first baseline picked on the back end by Davis nice play he Saves a run right there as he tags the bag Red Sox get a run tie the game one to one Tied one to one as 
Mike Davis leads it off. He's got their run in the bottom of the third. Red Sox answer with a run of their own in the top of the fourth inning. As Porcello had a long wait while the Red Sox were grabbing their run. Mike Davis getting his second look at Rick Porcello tonight. He struck out looking in the second inning. Davis, Lori, and Simeon to bat in the inning. Six, seven, and eight for the Oakland A's. Mike Davis, of course, the son of Ron Davis, pitched in the big leagues for a number of years. Closer with the Twins and the Yankees. I met I kids. I said, you know, I took your old man deep. He goes, join the crowd. Everybody did. Glasses, <laughs> didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah. Full count here as Porcello battles back. Lori, then Marcus Simeon. We'll do it again. Yeah, they say that you always remember your first hit or your first home run. Well, I remember Ike Davis, the home run I hit off of him because it was my very first start. I hit two home runs, so I remembered the first one, Ken Schramm, and then I hit another one off of Ron Davis. So it's almost, I remember that one almost like my first one because it happened the same day. And then my Nine year career after that was a steady decline. Really? <laughs> that was it the start of well. Yeah. I mean, that was the pinnacle. The center fielder Mookie bats over towards left center. Good size gap out there in right center field. And it's headed out in that direction. Right where the Red Sox were not. A gapper out to right center field. And Ike Davis into second base with a double to begin things here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Kind of shows you if you're able to keep your hands back a little bit. This is not a good swing by Ike Davis. He's out in front on the pitch. He's kind of bent over. But his hands stay back just enough where he gets the good solid barrel of the bat on. And he drives this all the way into the right center field gap. Lead off double here for Ike Davis brings up Brett Laurie. Single to right field in the second inning. We're now five hits for the Oakland A's. Now you'd think Laurie would be so susceptible to off speed pitches. He just got so much extra motion in his swing, a big hitch, a huge stride. Seems like it would be so easy to get him out front off balance. Hard stuff up and in. My heart out to talk to Porcello. He's in scoring position, seven for his last ten. Well, to celebrate Small Business Month this May, Eastern Bank will be sharing business tips, stories of inspiration, and other ways to make every day a big day for your small business. Celebrate with us at easternbank.com slash smallbiz. Mike Davis with a leadoff double to begin this inning. Get better, Jerry Remy. Get well soon. And something's up here at second base with Ike Davis. The trainer, Bob Melvin, headed out there. He was stretching it out, and then he... Into kind of a sprint there while they had time out, and now they're out to check on him. Not sure if he injured himself on the double running to second base. Might be a little bit more of a quad. He's not really trying to stretch out a hammy or anything. Mentioned when Swihart was out there, he's trying to stretch it out, do a little bit of running while time was out. Make sure time was out, and then tried to 
run a little bit. He stays in the game at second base. If you're feeling it while you're just standing around on second, you think you're going to feel it quite a bit more if you have to try to score on a base hit. For a strike and it's two and one. Back to back seven inning outings for Porcello coming in. Wins against Toronto and Tampa Bay. Now a liner in right center field. Davis had to wait. He now gets to third base. And it'll be first and third here with nobody out in the fourth inning. Now notice how he's running. He didn't run real hard, and I don't know if he didn't think he was going to be able to score. You're right. Pedroia jumped for that line drive up over his head, so Davis did have to hesitate, but Mookie Betts got on that ball fairly quickly as well. But boy, you would think that this is a ball into the right center field gap where I got to think I might have a chance to score on a ball like that. And Davis wasn't even thinking about it. First and third, nobody out. Marcus Simeon coming up. Line out to the warning track in center field back in the second inning 0 for 1. Mike Gallego the third base coach thinking not as aggressively with nobody out. The Sox just tying the game 1 to 1 in the top half of this inning. And the A's trying to answer in the bottom half of the inning. Drop in there for a strike. Well, Porcello's got to be thinking strike out and ground ball in that order. Time called very late. First, Porcillo has been holding the baseball a lot longer. And the timeout call from Vic Carapazza, the home plate umpire. On the ground and foul. And towards the Oakland A's pen. Pens are exposed here. Foul ground on the first base and third base lines. Relievers are crazy about to these type bullpens that are exposed. No, I'm like having your own little area to go to. Well, there's been some incidents here yes. in Oakland <laughs> <laughs> you know, with fans getting a little too involved. Now we're gonna have a pinch runner at third base. They're gonna take Ike Davis out of this game. Davis leaving as retention took out of his hands. Max Muncy running here at third base. So Davis coming out of the game. Aaron leg injury. First and third, 2 2 pitch. Ball foul off to the right, heading over is Napoli, and he won't have a play. Racing over there is always a chance here in Oakland on a. Yeah, on and foul. I think if he took a better route, he would have a chance. This ball's going to land about 15 feet to his left in the front row. Got to figure Muncie will stay in the game and play first base now for Ike Davis as well. Inside with a fastball, full count. Oh, 
I would think that the Oakland A's would be aggressive here as well and send the runner. 75th pitch coming up for Porcello. Runner not going. There's a ground ball to shortstop. Bogarts to second for one, on to first. It is in time. Double play as the run scores from third base in Muncie. As the A's take a 2 1 lead, but the Red Sox turning the double play for now. We'll see if Melvin is going to challenge us or not. He started out of the dugout. Now looks like he's heading back in. So a double play turned by the Red Sox to get the outs, but the A's take a 2 1 lead. Uh, and that's why you send the runner to possibly keep yourself out of a double play situation, get your infielders moving around. So the base is empty now with two down. Eric Sogar, the batter. To shallow center, dropping in for a base hit. Sogard not waiting around jumps on the first pitch and singles out to center field. Third hit of the inning for the A's. Now batting center fielder. Now it's back up top for Billy Burns. And struck out looking in the first inning at a bunt single down the third base line in the third inning. He came around to score the Oakland A's first run. First pitch as well, fouling it back. Solo gives up a run in the third, a run in the fourth inning. And on the grass is step or two at third base, Pablo Sandoval. On the left field line and foul over by the Oakland A's pen. And Swihart able to knock it down. No advance. And first base for Sogard. He's pretty good on balls in the dirt. Seen him struggle a couple times, but we've seen him get crossed up occasionally. That makes it a little bit more difficult. But it's kind of strange where they said, well, this kid's going to hit. So far, he hasn't. Is down the left field line, but playing in that direction. <laughs> As Hanley Ramirez, he was, was he in foul territory. Foul ground, pretty close. <laughs> Makes the catch down there that ends the inning. The A's pull ahead two to one at the end of four.
available at Men's Warehouse. Well, the A's grab a run in the bottom of the fourth inning as we head to the fifth. It's two to one Oakland. And Shane Victorino to lead it off here for Boston. Xander Bogarts and Blake Swihart to follow. Victorino fouled out to the catcher, Stephen Vogt, in the third inning. Max Muncy stays in the game after pinch running for Ike Davis. Takes over for him defensively at first. Come in on Victorino, and they do pick up the inside corner. Popped up left side, Simeon into shallow left, and the shortstop for the A's makes the catch for the first down of the inning. It's time for a game break brought to you by Jordan's, the furniture store of the Boston Red Sox. Tom. Tom, thanks very much. Back here at O.Co. Coliseum, where the Oakland A's have a 2 1 lead over the Red Sox right now. Xander Bogarts grounded out to shortstop in the third inning. As we're looking for an economical inning after a very long fourth inning. 35 pitches in the fourth inning. Popped up right side. Muncy and Sogard. It's Sogard, the second baseman. And there are two outs here in the fifth inning. A couple of pop outs. Now Scott Casimir's pitching line is brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers. Four and two thirds, one hit, one run. That came last inning. Three walks. Two of those walks coming last inning. And not been a huge strikeout night so far. Two K's for Casimir. Here's Blake Swihart batting out of the number nine spot. He flied out to the right fielder Josh Reddick his first time up. That's the top of the Red Sox order waiting on deck. So my heart was 0 for 8 in the series against the Blue Jays over the weekend. He goes the other way this time on towards right center field, and that'll get down. Back to the track in the wall. It's cut off by Rennick, but into second base goes Blake Swihart. A two out double to right center field for the Red Sox catcher. It's easy to see why everybody thinks this kid will hit right here. This is an excellent oppo swing right there. Bat head traveling through the plane of the strike zone just keeps it right on that baseball and into the gap. Maybe the Red Sox can pick up a run here with two outs in the inning. On top of the order, Mookie Betts will try to get it done. Mookie is 0 for 2 in the game. He grounded out to third base in the first inning, grounded back to the mound. In the fourth inning. And he sends one towards shallow left center field, and that's going to get in for a hit. Around from second comes Swihart, and this game is tied two to two. So some two out magic for the Red Sox. First, the double by Swihart, followed up by the RBI single by Mookie Betts, and it's two to two. I was thinking Mookie would look to ambush this first pitch. I think he was thinking it was going to be a fastball, but he does a good job of hanging with this. He doesn't get out too far in front. That ball off the end of the bat a little bit, but just dumps it in there for the base hit. So the Red Sox tying it up here with two outs in the fifth and you know, Dustin Pedroia the batter. So Mookie Betts tries to get into scoring position here for Pedroia. 
Big lead as usual at first base. For a strike to Pedroia. Dustin struck out swinging in the first inning, walked and scored in the fourth inning. Kazmir does a good job of varying his looks to first base, and he has a slide step move as well. He's very quick to the plate, hard to run on. Going back onto the track, he leaps and makes the catch against the wall. So Pedroia gives it a ride to deep left, but Coco Crisp robs him out there in left field. Red Sox tie the game with a run, two to two. Coco Chris would be leading it off here after that great catch out in left field. I tell you, I, I really thought that PD had enough on that one. We talked about the the air getting heavy here at night. Ball doesn't travel nearly as well. Coco Chris stays with that all the way to the wall. I don't think it would have gone out of the park even if he didn't catch it. So it ended the inning. The Red Sox getting a run, tying the score two to two. And it is two, three, and four now for the A's. Chris Reddick and Butler to face Rick Porcello. 80 pitches deep into his outing. And Coco spins out of the way, but takes a strike, a high strike at that. All for his first 17 to be in the year is Coco Chris. Faded off the DL last Wednesday. Since then, has appeared the last five Oakland A's games. Rick Porcello's pitching line is brought to you by Ace Ticket. Plus seven hits, two runs, a walk, and two Ks. Run in the third, a run in the fourth. Jumping on the 2 1 pitch and fouling it back. This last year finished the year playing 126 games for the Athletics, hitting a 246 career high, 66 walks a year ago. He likes to swing the bat. It's always been one of those guys where they were hoping he would walk a little more often. Strikes out. He knew it. Takes with him the third K for Porcello in the first out of the fifth inning. 
Again, the little Yahoo fastball. This is a pitch that's been very effective for him. Well, one down in the fifth, and it brings up Josh Reddick. He's been on twice. Reddick singling to left field. He walked in the third. Rosello has yet to have a 1 2 3 inning in his outing. Fly ball down the left field line. Sandoval and Bogart's going full board, but that's going to fall harmlessly and jump up into the seats. Both those two infielders right there playing Reddick to pull a little bit, so they're shifted up towards the middle of the infield. That's a long run to go get a ball. There aren't very many foul balls that land in foul territory in the stadium that aren't caught, but you can have that happen here in Oakland. Saw it on the first base side with Napoli. That ball landed maybe in the first row. He just kind of misjudged where it was going to be. He probably could have made that play had he been in the right spot. And then that play right there with Sandoval and Bogarts both chasing it. They couldn't get there. A defensive swing there by Reddick. Three for seven in his career against Porcello. Hitting a home run. Ninetieth pitch for Porcello, and it is a fly ball out to left center field. And the Ramirez is there to make the catch. Two down in the inning. Well, on August 9th, the Zach Brown Band will play their third consecutive night in concert at Fenway Park. And included with every purchase ticket is a download of the band's new, brand new album. Be sure to get your tickets online at RedSox.com/slash Zach Brown. So two down here in the fifth inning brings up Billy Butler. After grounding out to second base in the first inning, had an RBI single to right in the third. Now he drives one out to right field, playing shallow as Victorino. It's going to be over his head and off the base of the wall. Butler's going to try for two. The throw from Victorino is off the mark, and Butler goes in standing. A two out double for the Oakland A's DH, Billy Butler. Butler's got that off field swing down. He's got some pretty good sock the other way. Ball down and away from him, just kind of hammers that thing. Watch it hit right at the base of the wall. No chance for any of the outfielders to catch it. So two down, Butler at second, and here is Steven Vogt. He's trying to have some two out magic like the Red Sox just did in the top half of the inning. And that Porcillo had not had a 1 2 3 inning, and he still doesn't. Oakland has left four men on base through the first four innings. Two quick outs here, and the strikeout for Crisp, the fly out to left for Reddick, but. Butler's two out double has added more pitches in the inning for Porcello. Close pitch called the ball, and it's 3 0. I don't think you can just pump a four seam fastball down the middle in this count to vote. It's a fastball, and it's now 3 and 1. Muncie who's not had an at bat yet. To right field, Victorino on the run, and he's not going to get this. Up against the wall, around from second base comes Butler. It's an RBI double for Stephen Vogt, and the Oakland A's are back on top three to two. And they do have some two out magic in them.
Suddenly after two quick outs, Porcello loses his location a little bit, both to Butler, and then that pitch right out over the middle, 3-1 pitch. Butler easily scores from second base, and now Muncy with his first at-bat. Oh, Willis, the pitching coach, headed out here to talk to Porcello. Red Sox have just got action in the pen. See, Agando is that action. He just did get up in the pen. Well, stay tuned after the game for Nesson Sports today, presented by People's United Bank. See what know how can do. TC and Adam will have complete post game coverage from tonight's game in Oakland and reaction to the NFL dropping the hammer on the Patriots today. We'll run in here for the A's who have regained a 3 to 2 lead. All the coming with two outs in the fifth and. Max Muncy coming up. And Davis leaving with an apparent leg injury. First to bat here for Max Muncy. And a swing and a miss. Called up from the Pacific Coast League on April the 25th. Missing at two high fastballs, 0 and 2. A lot of Muncie's appearances, although there haven't been many, but a couple of his appearances here have been at third base, not first. His two starts have been at third. And look out, he get his face out of the way. Only one mile an hour fastball up and in. Here we go again with sort of a common theme, and it's not just with Red Sox pitchers. It's kind of what's been going on around baseball lately. Can't get through five innings without throwing 100 pitches. To me, that's there's just something wrong with that. Got to throw the ball over the plate more often. That one bounced well in front of the plate, and Swihart able to block it. No advance. More voted second base. Came up well short that time. at his arsenal tonight 61 percent fastballs for Rick Porcello. Haven't seen him use the curveball as effectively tonight as he had in his previous two starts. Fly ball out to center field and deep back goes Mookie Betts. It'll take him to the track but he makes the catch. In front of the wall. So a drive there for Muncie. A run for the Oakland A's as they take a 3 2 lead through five.
top of the sixth inning, three to two. The Oakland A's have the lead over the Red Sox as David Ortiz and the Ramirez Mike Napoli batting in the inning. Ortiz with a swing and a miss for strike one against Kazmir. David tonight has grounded out to second and had an RBI single to center field in the fourth inning. 90th pitch for Kazmir and Ortiz shows bunt. Grab the attention of Brett Lurie down there at third base. Well, he's not going to grab the attention of anyone else over there. <laughs> he's the only guy. And he A's into the shift on the right side. Woo! David looks at strike two. It'd be low. It off himself in the box. Rick Porcello up over 100 pitches at 101 through the first five, and now trailing in this game three to two. Rondo has sat down in the pen. Looking ball kind of fooled Ortiz there, but misses for a ball two and two. Ortiz, that's going to get in and head towards the corner. Over to play it is Chris. Big Poppy into second base with a double to begin the top of the sixth inning. It's such a difference for Ortiz when he stays on that ball and tries to drive it the other way rather than trying to roll over the top and pull it. Look at that. Slashing that thing down the left field line. With a conscious effort to hit it the other way. His 141st career extra base hit it ties Pete Rose for 26th all time. And scoring position here with nobody out in the sixth inning. And Hanley Ramirez, the batter. Walk and a strikeout so far for Ramirez. Again with Kazmir out of the stretch, we'll see if Hanley's timing can get in sync a little bit better. One for nine so far on the trip since his return. As he takes the strike. One and two. A lot of hitters might worry about looking bad on a couple of pitches. Hanley knows he's still got one big swing left. David Ortiz at second. Nobody out here in the sixth inning. Pick up played second, and Ortiz is out. They pick him off second base. Big out there. Sogard coming in from second. The quick move from Kazmir, and Ortiz is caught at second. That was just kind of a timing play. Did he touch him, Don? Did he get him before he got back there? It almost looked like he missed him the first go around. John Farrell is going to challenge yeah, that. He's going to come out and maybe take a second look. I think when he went to tag him the first time, he missed his leg. No question the throw beat him, but was the tag there? We'll show you as many views of it as we have.
will probably be the best view. Yeah, it, well, you know what? He tags him with his elbow. He yeah, never did touch say. him with his glove. No. He went in for the tag and missed. Hit his shin with his elbow and never touched him with the glove. I think this has a decent chance of getting turned over. Missed. Still hasn't tagged him. So John Farrell challenging here, and the umpire is taking a look. Larry Van Over, the crew chief, first base umpire, call made by Ron Culpa, the second base umpire. We are looking on the big board here as well. And you could see in various replays, Ron Culpa, the umpire, hustling to try to get in the best position to make that call. You see him yeah, coming into the picture there. He's kind of blocked from that spot, and they stay without. Oh, man. So picked off is David Ortiz. Challenge lost by John Farrell and the Red Sox. First pick off for Casimir this season. And Brian Butterfield getting into it with the home plate umpire, Vic Carapaza. And Butterfield getting close here to being ejected. As you cannot argue after a challenge, and Butterfield was fired up. John Farrell trying to calm him down from the dugout. Drive foul down the left field line out of play. What'd you see there? I saw what you saw, but you know, the umpire's block was it conclusive enough that he did miss that tag the first time at all? I don't That's think it's a tough he, thing. I, I mean, it looks like he at all. Did. You know, I don't know if there's an implied contract contact, contact the rule arm. out there. Yeah. It's it's like the play they had at home where, where a catcher is getting is bracing himself to get bowled over at the plate right. and so he kind of balls up and you make contact and you're clearly out because he's crushing you before you get to the plate but maybe he didn't actually touch you exactly. with the glove with the glove the implied contact the is that you're out arm is there and it beats him as this one is grounded foul I'm a big fan big fan of replay <laughs> Works every time. Only fracture the bat gets a new one here with one out. Bases empty. Red Sox trailing by a run. Outside for ball three. Marcelo, Steve Lyons, Garen Austin coming to you from O.Co. Coliseum in Oakland, California. Red Sox only visit of the year here to take on the A's. Middle venue of the three city tour for the Red Sox. And a fly ball to center field. Burns back there waiting, and he makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Well, the pen has not been very good for the Oakland A's. First man up out there is Evan Scribner. With Casimir's pitch count rising. Well, the bullpen and the defense for the Oakland A's have been among the problems. Yeah. Terrible defensively this year. Easily the worst team in baseball at catching the ball. Their bullpen's really struggled. Off by Ortiz there at second, potentially a big play in this game. In the dirt, it's now 3 0. MLB, after viewing all relevant angles, replay 
not to definitively determine that the runner touched second base. Barney being tagged on the right leg. And the call was standing. Tagged on the right leg with what? Swing and a miss as Napoli will cut there. Because line to right and walked. I think the word definitively is the most overused word in replay now. Hi, and Napoli will head on down to first base. Second time Napoli has walked now four given up by Kazmir. When when did any part of the glove ever touch Ortiz? From that angle, I can't see it, but from the other angle, there was a chance. You know, there's not even any. You know how you, you if you if something does hit, yep. there's like some extra movement in the glove. Uh, hey, you know they upheld the call. That's the way it works, but it didn't look good to me. Kurt Young out there, the pitching coach, to talk to Kazmir here with two outs. I can't get thrown out of the game if I disagree, right? I disagree. Oh, you can get I'm not if getting you, thrown out of this game. If you stand up right now. I disagree with that call. You start yelling down there. You mean like Butterfield did? Right. From up here, when you make enough noise and they fans can throw notice, me out of here. And then the umpires notice you could get tossed. Sandoval pops it up, foul back and out of play. You could do it. Especially if you start throwing stuff from up here, too, that would get it done. Well, I would never do that. That's okay. not the kind of guy. I'll argue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll never throw anything move. at you. As far as you know. Napoli gains his lead at first. Check on Napoli back to the bag. Down 0 and 2. Wow. Ugly healthy hack. That's just just something's not right with the way he's swinging the bat on the right hand side. Look at that. Look how tied up he is. Well, it goes on the 0 2 and Sandoval fouls it back. Fastball up. I'm going to make up my mission for tomorrow to figure out what that sliding mitt is all about. That. Napoli and others wear. Oh, it's a protection for the hand, but it, it's first. This year is the first time I've seen that big exaggerated mitt. Swing and a miss. Sandoval goes chasing and strikes out. Five and a half done. It's three to two. Oakland.
Lines. Book your low fare on Southwest.com. Your local Subaru dealers. Digital Federal Credit Union. See what DCU can save you. Sullivan Tired Auto Service. Thank you, New England, for 60 great years. And by the Kia Sorento. It's on to the bottom of the sixth inning. David Ortiz talking it over with Brian Butterfield. Three to two. A's have the lead. Nine to four. Oakland out hitting Boston. And a new pitcher for the Red Sox is this call to the bullpen. It is brought to you by Kia Alexei Gondo. Into his 14th game, 1 0 with a 3.29 earned run average. Dealing with Brett Laurie, who leads it off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The ground ball right side, softly to Pedroia. Pedroia, kind of a check swing, grounds out. One of the first out here in the sixth inning. Good quick outs, that's what they need. So Porcello going the first five innings in tonight's game. Eight hits and three runs. He departs on the hook in this game. Hawk and three strikeouts. Ended up throwing 101 pitches. One down for Marcus Simeon. Simeon has flat out to the warning track in center field. Last time up, rounded into the 6 4 3 double play. Last work to, on Friday night in the loss at Toronto, a perfect seventh inning of relief. And for Gondo, he's allowed five total runs this year, and all have come on home runs. Nasty pitch there as Simeon goes chasing and strikes out, two down. First strikeout for Agondo. Now well, Agondo comes in here looking like he wants to do some damage quick. Get his boys back into the dugout to swing the bats a little bit. More action in the Red Sox pen. The left hander Craig Breslow warming. Two down for Eric Sogar. Left field line, Hanley Ramirez will watch that one land over by the pen. And out of his reach, Sogard's third at bat of the game. He's wide to left and single to center. Tonight from the Red Sox starter, now it's the pen into this game. Gondo trying to pick up that outside corner. So guard fouling it back. Five on the fastball from Agondo. Time now for the Geico Red Sox moment. All season long, Geico will highlight the 1975 Red Sox in honor of their 40th anniversary and their 32nd game of the 75 campaign. The Red Sox blank the A seven to nothing behind a complete game two hitter from Bill Lee. One two pitch to Sogar. Fly ball down the left field line. Ramirez on the run again. And Hanley a little bit closer this time, but still cannot run it down in foul ground. So close to that line. And that's where he is again, guarding the line down the left field line. Two pitch to Sogard. 
Dumped up foul ground. Sandoval. Big chase, but it ends up behind the A's dog. Got that into him. Left side of the Red Sox team should just call timeout for a second so they can catch their breath from sprinting <laughs> over to the wall so many times. Did he go? They checked. No, he did not, says Brian Knight, third base umpire. Two and two. Left handed batters against the Gondo, hitting an old 53. They're one for 19. That's one of the reasons why they got Fafaro over here because he was so effective against lefties. Now he's gone. They're really relying heavily on what Ogando's been able to bring them. Line into center field. Eric Sogard has his second hit of the night. So two for three from the number nine spot aboard here with two outs. Well, another guy the Red Sox had on their staff as Edward Mujica joining the Oakland A's. Already having a good time. It'd be strange for him just leaving the Red Sox and here they are. <laughs> you know he was very surprised that he was Actually picked up by the Oakland A's. He figured he would clear waivers and negotiate a, a new deal with whoever he wanted to go to, but I think he was pleasantly surprised that Oakland wanted him here. His bullpen has been struggling. They're looking for some answers. Two down, Sogard at first base, and Billy Burns the batter. And he'll line one into center field. He's going to get down and roll a while. So get back, back in. Headed for third and heading to second base. A double for Billy Burns. Second and third now at two down. And again, the A's getting stuff done here with two outs in the inning. With Ogando throwing 95 and Burns heading from the left side, Mookie Betts was playing him into the opposite field gap. So when he smokes this one just to the right side of the second base bag, Mookie's got a long way to go get that. This has happened quickly. Carl Willis quickly out of the Red Sox dugout. We had Breslow warming in the pen as Gondo got two quick outs, Lori and Simeon, but singles by Sogard, a double by Billy Burns, and it is second and third with two outs. The Red Sox Foundation launched the Impact Awards, which provides Red Sox fans in the five New England states outside of Massachusetts with the opportunity to vote on their favorite local nonprofits to decide which organizations will be awarded grants totaling $75,000. To cast your vote, visit RedSox.com slash impact. Two outs, second and third here. A's trying to add on to their one-run advantage. Adding in the bottom of the sixth inning. And Coco Crisp, the opportunity to do that here. And he lines one caught at first base by Napoli. Mike Napoli jumping into the air to rob the A's. So runners are left at second and third. A hot shot off the bat of Chris, but Napoli up to the task.
and everything else just got robbed here by Mike Napoli at first base. And a hot shot and a lunge there by Napoli to reel that in. That saves a couple runs and a three run deficit in this ball game and are getting a little bit late to have to worry about trying to make up three. Nice play right there and that keeps Coco crisp. Hitless on the heater. Evan Scribner now into the game here for the Oakland A's 17th appearance at 2.00 earned run average. 20 strikeouts to two walks and a Shane Victorino leads it off. Here in the seventh inning. Victorino really has to get something moving for himself. Still in there against the right handed pitcher now but. Face Casmir the lefty he's face another lefty tomorrow he's going to get his opportunities. He's to start showing his value this ball club. And Sox being out hit in this game 11 to 4 by the A's. Casmir going the first six giving up four hits two runs he walked for it struck out three. Now Scribner into the game. Swing and a miss. 91 mile an hour fastball. Scribner giving up two runs on Friday and snapped an eight two thirds inning scoreless streak that he had over 10 games. That was against the Seattle Mariners. Right field and Josh Reddick coming in to make the catch for the first out of the seventh inning. They'll get immediate care without leaving the ballpark at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center first aid station behind section 12 in the lower concourse. The IDMC is the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox. One down here in the seventh inning brings up Xander Bogarts. Oh for two he's grounded out to shortstop and popped out to second base. In there for a strike over the inside corner. Swing there from Xander. Scribner coming into tonight, tied for second among American League relievers in games with 16. Fourth and strikeouts with 20. This is trouble. And on the right field line, and that's going to fall in for a hit. So Reddick can't get there. It's a one out single for Xander Bogarts. But did you miss the new episode of Nessa, Next Producer? Catch it tomorrow at 7. You've seen the films from around the outstanding student filmmakers. Now the four finalists are revealed. Here are the critiques from Hollywood judges Brad Falchuk, co creator of Glee and American Horror Story, along with legendary TV executive producer Tom Werner. Hear what it will take to become the next Nesson producer tomorrow at 7. One out, one on. Blake Swihart, the batter. And there goes Bogarts at first, and a little hit and run here into right field for a base hit. And Bogarts hits for third base. He'll get there without a problem. Second hit of the night for Blake Swihart. Boy, it would be nice to see Swihart start to settle in and be the hitter that. He has been through the minor leagues. Everyone said this guy's going to hit at the major league level. Catching's a little bit of an issue. He's looked fine behind the plate catching, and now starting to string together a few hits. His second one tonight. Kurt Young, the pitching coach, headed back out there again. Oakland does not have anybody else warming in the pen right now. Scribner coming in and after getting the first out, giving it back to back base hits. Top of the order, Mookie Betts will be next with a tying run. 90 feet away now for the Red Sox here in the seventh. I like the way Mookie Betts has been swinging the bat lately as well. Sports can bring you to the edge of your seat and to your feet. It should always bring you to Nesson.com, region's number one sports site with comprehensive Red Sox coverage, 
The most Bruins content in New England. The video and podcast found only on Nesson.com. Xander Bogarts at third base. Blake Swihart at first with one out in the inning. That's will line it into right center field, a base hit. Xander Bogarts will score to tie the game. To third goes Swihart. And an RBI single for Mookie Betts, and it's 3-3. Three to three. There's Mookie Betts really coming on lately. His numbers are starting to climb. Loves to jump on that first pitch fastball. That's pretty. Watch Blake Swihart run too. That's not what a normal catcher does. Kid's got good speed. Of course, he's young too. Yeah. Those young guys, they can run. So first and third, a run in to tie the game. Casimir, no longer part of the decision, and for Rick Porcello, no longer part of the decision. And a tie game now. Dustin Pedroia has a chance to break this tie. And the bullpen troubles for the Oakland A's continue on. That is Fernando Abad in the pen. He just did get up as they check on Betts at first base. They're going to have double barrel action down there in the bullpen for the Oakland A's here. Starting and stopping was Betts as the pitch called to strike, and Betts got back to the bag at first. Almost looked like Vogt was going to fire down to first base, but uh, Mookie kind of stopped. Steps and then just stopped. Little throw over and he dives back safely. I'd be worried about Betts over there too. That has now been joined by a new teammate there, Edward Mujica. On the ground, back to the mound. The second for one. Oh. And that's all they're going to get. Run scores. Red Sox will take the 4 3 lead. And in hard at second base went Betts. And reaching at first is Pedroia. Once Simeon bobbled the ball, that's when you really lose concentration on the runner who's coming in hard on you. You start to have all your concentration go towards the ball that you think you're dropping. And now you're just stuck there. And here comes Betts in hard. That's a completely legal, safe, good, hard baseball play, but Simeon's just kind of left out to dry, and he did it to himself. Now, that could have been ugly for him. See the way that knee kind of whipped around? Now the Red Sox have taken the lead, an RBI for Dustin Pedroia on the play. And the pitching change now, Scribner coming out. And it looks like a bod will be coming in. 4-3 Red Sox.
four to three. Red Sox now have the lead, looking for more with Pedroia at first base and two outs. David Ortiz, the batter. And a check at first base on Pedroia. See if David Ortiz kind of sticks with that off field game plan that he had in his last at bat where he just striped a double down the left field line. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Kia. Fernando Abad into the game. 1.93 earned run average in his last six appearances. Overall, his 15th game of the year. 5.79 ERA and opponents hitting at 306 against him. Ortiz lines in, it's caught at first by Muncy. So we saw Napoli with a diving catch earlier, and now Muncy checks in with a diving catch at first base. Ortiz, Rob, Red Sox take a 4 3 lead. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Now the Red Sox take the 4 3 lead. Great catch by Max Muncy down there at first base, holding the runner on, and they're doing this. Now we've seen some nice reaction time by the first baseman in this game. It looked like his body took a little bit of a bad hop after it hit the ground, but still made the play. So it's on here to the bottom of the seventh inning. New pitcher for the Red Sox, Craig Breslow. 13th appearance without a record, a 2.81 earned run average. Well, it's hitting at 224 against Breslow. It sucks with a one run lead. And Reddick off the end of the bat fouls it away. Breslow last working on Friday night at Toronto. The trim of the man on second with no outs in the eighth inning. He's able to strike out Pilar looking at Palomelo swinging and then got Goins to ground out to get out of the jam. A liner to center field starts the bottom of the seventh inning for the Athletics. Second hit of the night, third time Josh Reddick has been on base. HB Hood salutes future Red Sox Hall of Famer Tim Wakefield since retiring from his outstanding career. Tim has become honorary chairman of the Red Sox Foundation, the award winning charity that has contributed more than 75 million to make dreams come true for families of New England. Congratulations to Tim Wakefield. Lee Butler batting with the lead runner on here for the A's in the bottom of the seventh inning. And a grounder up the middle and in the center field. Touching second inning for third is Reddick. He will get there. And the A's have runners at first and third with nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Oh, both hitters going right back up the middle. 
I was just hoping this had a little bit less on it. Maybe they could have turned two, but that squirts right up the middle. Now you're looking at first and third and trouble. Three hit night for Billy Butler. Stephen Vogt, last time up, double to drive in a run. Field defense straight away on Vogt. He'll hit it in the air to right field. Victorino makes the catch, tagging at third base and scoring is Reddick. Throw goes to second, and we're tied again. It didn't take long for the A's to tie it up four to four. Sack fly for Stephen Vogt, his second RBI of the game. This kid does pretty much anything you need of him. You need a fly ball, he gets it. Reddick easily score here. There's not even going to be a throw. You get this ball back into second base. So Butler at first base, one down, and Max Muncy coming up. Actually going to be a pinch hitter now for the Oakland A's. Mark Canna coming up here. And he takes a pitch down low ball one. And a two for his last 20 at the plate as Tazawa warms down. And the Red Sox pen. Trying to get Breslow to get him through the seventh inning. Starter for the Red Sox, Priscilla lasting just five. Gondo went the sixth inning and Breslow in trouble here in the seventh. And it fouls it back to the screen and it's down one and two. Four of the last eight hits for Canna are home runs. No hits in his last 13 at bats against lefties. And 0 for 3 this year as a pinch hitter. Canna was a teammate of Simeon's at Cal. Both went to school there. Screen and it's still two and two. And Lori waiting on deck. Oakland has tied the game here in the seventh. Time called. Another check at first base and back is Billy Butler, not likely going anywhere. They got a Guy pinch hitting here who's really been struggling too for his last 20. Try to get a ground ball here, try to maybe turn a double play. Fouls it back, stays alive. We'll see a seventh pitch in this at bat. And Canna strikes out. So the second out of the inning, first strikeout for Craig Breslow, two down. 
We'll catch an all-new Red Sox report tomorrow. Throughout the summer, the Red Sox report will celebrate the 40th anniversary of the 75 team. This week's episode revisits one of the greatest World Series ever played 40 years later. Members of that team reflect on their magical run that included the drama of Game 6 and the heartbreak of Game 7. All that and more on the Red Sox report tomorrow at 5. Now John Trail to make the change as Craig Bleslow departs. Because now will be coming in 4-4 the score. Association Lung Force campaign to make lung cancer a public health priority. From May 3rd to the 23rd, you can make a donation to support lung cancer research at the register at all CVS Pharmacy locations. CVS Pharmacy is the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. Four to four the score with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The A's have just tied it up. And Shinichi Tazawa into his 16th game of the year, 0-1 with a 1.80 earned run average. 15 innings, 11 Ks. Opponents hitting at 218 against him as Brett Lorry, the batter. And Lorry takes the breaking ball for ball one. Two hit night so far for the Oakland A's third baseman. A single to right in the second, then a single to right in the fourth inning. Butler held on at first base by Napoli. Ball foul down the right field line out of play. As low responsible for Billy Butler at first base. Oakland with back to back base hits to begin the inning before the sack fly by Stephen Vogt. Oakland retying the game four to four. Carving it foul to the screen. It's amazing to me the success that Laurie's had with all the extra movement in that swing. Lots of moving parts, easy to get out of sync. Chop to third base. Sandoval is going to go to second base and get the four shot there that ends the inning. But the damage done, the A's get a run and tie the score four to four through seven.
Clubhouse. TC and Jim Rice will look back at Pedro Martinez's 12 strikeout night in Oakland back in 2001. Edward Mujica, a minute ago here for the Oakland A's. 11 games with the Red Sox, one and one with a 4.61 earned run average. 294 opponent batting average against Mujica. And the first pitch swinging here is Hanley Ramirez to right field for the first out of the inning. Josh Reddick out there and right puts it away. Loud out. Mark Canna staying in the game. And taking over at first base after pinch hitting for Max Muncy. Of course, Max Muncy was in the game for Ike Davis. Oakland A's have announced that uh, Ike Davis left the game with a strained left quad. So one down here in the eighth, and it brings up Mike Napoli. For the Oakland A's, Tyler Clipper. Well, Edward Mujica in a game here, tied up late. These are not the situations that the Red Sox would run him out in. Didn't trust that he would be able to hold the other team down. He takes a hack and fouls it back two and two. The Sox have action there. Pat the left hander Tommy Lane. The Sox have the four three lead going into the bottom of the seventh inning but the A's tie it up four to four. Napoli fouling it back. Acquired by the A's on Saturday with cash considerations for a player to be named later or further cash considerations. Get to pay for him twice? That doesn't sound right. That's it. I think it's coming back uh, <laughs> the other way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, they have to pay twice. <laughs> Napoli fouling it off to the right out of play. Napoli has had. Some odd swings there, two in a row, where he's had to adjust in the middle of his swing. But that just shows you that Mojica does not have, at least on those two pitches, the late movement enough to avoid contact with the bat. So Napoli not even comfortable and still able to foul pitches off. You see an eight pitch in this at bat. That's the split finger there, and Napoli was able to get a piece. Napoli strikes out, but he ends up getting him. Two down in the eighth. Tonight's game summary is brought to you by Xfinity. Rosillo goes five innings in this game. Ends up throwing 101 pitches. Not part of the decision. Mookie Betts with a couple of hits. David Ortiz a couple of hits. Scott Kasmer also not part of the decision for the A's tonight. Six innings, two earned runs. And Billy Butler's had a three hit night. As it was a sack fly for Steven Volt that uh, retied this game in the seventh inning. Pablo Sandoval 0 for 3 tonight. Now is the chance to bat from the left side with the right hander out there in Mujica. Sandoval had no success tonight from the right handed batter's box. And terrific numbers against Mujica. 4 for 4, two solo home runs. Two. 
Well, you got to think that Sandoval's just happy to be on that left side. He hasn't done anything all season long hitting right handed and has absolutely crushed the ball hitting left handed. Calls this one off to the right out of play. Well, yesterday, Red Sox hit a couple of big home runs. Mike Napoli had a three run shot. Pablo Sandoval. A two run home run from the Red Sox victory, salvaging the final game of the series. No two pitch. Wanted up, but that was too far up, and Sandoval not chasing that. It back, and we'll do it again. One and two. Jim Victorino has returned to the Red Sox tonight. So far, hitless. And Stephen Vogt now, the catcher, headed out to talk to Mejica. Mejica's first appearance here in Oakland A's uniform. Head of Pablo Sandoval, one and two. Here comes a split. Sandoval not chasing. Coco Crisp moves over towards the line and puts it away. A 1 2 3 debut for Edward Mujica in an Oakland A's uniform. 4 4 the score. Red Sox, NessonClubhouse.com. It has videos, games, and a whole lot more. It's fun, free, and easy to use. NessonClubhouse.com. 4 4 into the bottom of the eighth inning. Tazawa back out on the mound for the Red Sox as he's able to get the final out of the seventh inning. Back out there to start the eighth. Marcus Simeon. Shortstop for the A's to lead it off. Simeon 0 for 3. His number 8 spot in the order. He's flying out to the warning track in center. Got it into a double play and last time up struck out swinging. Couple innings to go here in regulation where 
both teams headed to the back half of their batting order and the difference is the Red Sox back half has been productive tonight. The Oakland A's have not. Simeon with a swing and a miss, and Tazawa strikes him out for the first out of the eighth. Here is the production from the back half in the fifth inning. Blake Swihart with a ringing double into the right center field gap. And then the next pitch, Mookie Betts steps up and drills a base hit. That's going to score a run. And then in the seventh, Swihart again. Base hit to right. And then Mookie one more time. Add another RBI, another base hit. That's going to do it for Tazawa as Tommy Lane makes his way in. The score of four to four. Red Sox bringing on their fifth pitcher of the night, Tommy Lane, into his ninth appearance. No record of 3.52 earned run average, six strikeouts to three walks, and opponents hitting at 250 against the Red Sox lefty. Eric Sogard trying to drag bunt by the mound to second. Pedroia throws to first, and it is in time. Nice play by Dustin Pedroia. Sogard trying to bunt his way on. He's out number two of the eighth. It's an excellent bunt. Unless Pedroia is the second baseman. Usually all you have to do is get that past the pitcher, but you don't have the anticipation and the speed of a guy like Pedroia out there playing second all that often. O2 oh, down, back up top now for Billy Burns. And a bunch single of his own in the third inning and doubled his center field in the sixth. Now lifts a fly ball. Shallow left out goes Xander Bogarts. And he'll take him to the line as he makes the catch. That ends the eighth. We head for the ninth inning, tied four to four.
By DCU, TC and Jim Rice will bring you Red Sox Chairman Tom Werner's thoughts on MLB's Pace of Play initiative. DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? That is the ninth inning. Game tied four to four, and Shane Victorino to lead it off for the Red Sox. Bottom third of the Red Sox order. New pitcher on here for the Oakland A's. The closer right now for the A's, Tyler Clipper. 13th appearance. He is three for four in save opportunities. Obviously, not a safe situation here, but in a tie game at home. Victorino, Bogarts, and Swihart. Victorino to right field, and Reddick is there to make the catch an 0 for 4 night in the return for Shane Victorino. Kind of surprised that he's hit, hitting in that situation against the right hander. Talked earlier about the possibility of a platoon situation with Victorino and JBJ. If that's the case, you'd think maybe JBJ would come up and face the right handed pitching. And if not, maybe even Brock Holt coming in to swing the bat late in the game. One down, Xander Bogart's the batter. And Xander will pop it up foul, backing out of play. Bogart says, grounded to short, popped out to second, and single to right. Swing and a miss, and a pitch down and away. Has not allowed a run in his last four games, four and two thirds innings. One is hitting at 149 against him. Here's Sean Doolittle did not pitch uh, during the spring, placed on the 15 day DL, the strained left rotator cuff. Taken over as the A's closer last year in May. Strained rotator cuff, certainly not as serious as a torn rotator cuff, but it seems like you're headed in the right direction or the wrong direction. Oakland was seven people on the DL, and tonight they get another injury. And uh, Ike Davis he left this game with a strained left quad. Think about what this team has had to overcome when you think about. The entire middle of their order from last year isn't here anymore. This is up the middle and into center field. Bogarts. It's a wide turn at first, but he will hold there with a one out base hit, his second hit of the night. Bogarts does a good job of just dropping his bat head into the hitting zone here. Maybe a little bit fooled on the pitch. Hands back, just drop it through there. Good solid contact right back up the middle. One out, one on. Blake Swihart, who already's had a two hit night. After flying out to right in the third, he doubled to right center field in the fifth and a single to right in the seventh. The first and back to the bag is Bogarts. Talking about what this A's team has to overcome when you look at Cespedes and Moss and Donaldson and even Norris. Guys. Landed right in the middle of that lineup, all gone right now. It's a tough thing to replace. Softly chopped down the first baseline. Cannon will go back and tag the bag as Bogarts takes second base with two down. So they'll go ahead, run in scoring position here for the Red Sox in the ninth. Their closer up in the pen. Ojuri Hara with Rookie Betts coming up. Big spot here for Mookie. Last two at bats, he's come up in a similar situation and singled and drove in the run. Both times jumping on a first pitch.
outside for ball one. Tyler Clifford does not throw as hard as he used to, but he does have a big motion with lots of elbows and knees coming at you. Sometimes he looks like he's throwing harder than he is. That's so foul it back. Grounding out twice in the game and then singling to left to drive in a run, singling to center to drive in a run. Batting here in the top of the ninth inning in a tie game. Center Bogart to go ahead run at second base. Outside for ball two. It's a fly ball down the right field line. Long run for Josh Reddick over by foul ground. Reddick leaps and makes the catch. And they lead Bogarts in scoring position as we head to the bottom of the ninth inning, tied four to four. Four to four the score as we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Brooklyn A's have the right people coming up here. They got Coco Crisp leading it off in the bottom of the ninth inning against Tommy Lane. And Coco with a swing and a miss for strike one. Let's go for four in the game. 0 for 19 to begin the season here for the A's. And a pop up in the right center field. In from right comes the new right fielder, Jackie Bradley Jr., to make the catch for the first out of the ninth. That's a rule, you know. If you get put into the game as a defensive replacement, Finds first ball has to be hit to you. Let's take a look at the Toyota play of the game and Dustin Pedroia taking one deep to left field, but Hoku Chris making the catch up against the wall. Yeah, that's a nice shot, isn't it? Down for Josh Reddick, who takes a pitch outside for ball one. Reddick's been on base three times in this game, two singles and a walk. Mm -hmm. 
Billy Butler will be next here for the A's. Oh. Takes the strike. Retired all three A's that he's faced since coming in. Came in with an out of the eighth inning. Did that quickly too, just a couple pitches. The Sox have used five pitchers in the game. Porcello started. Reddick hits it hard, but foul outside of first. Kind of looking for a different approach out of Reddick, especially against the left hander. They had talked about him doing a much better job of using the entire field. The Red Sox fans know from his short period of time there. And remember the Oakland A's has been kind of a dead red, dead pole hitter. Foul back will do it again. Three and two. Worked on Saturday at Toronto. So well, this eighth inning as Uihara continues to warm in the pen. Reddick thought about it, but he takes ball four to pitch away. So essential winning run at first base with one out here for the A's. First base runner to reach against Lane. And here comes John Farrell now. With Billy Butler coming up, he's going to go get Uihara here in the ninth inning in a 4 4 game from Oakland. It is Mookie Betts a single to drive in a run in the fifth inning. A single to drive in a run in the seventh inning. Two hits, two RBIs tonight for Mookie Betts. RBIs 19 and 20 on the year. In the bottom of the ninth inning right now here in Oakland with one out, one on. Coach Ewey hire into the game for Boston. Tenth appearance. Two and one with a 2.16 earned run average. Six out of seven and save opportunities. 12 strikeouts, only one walk. One of sitting at 179 against Uihara. A little bit of a calculated risk here by John Farrell bringing his closer in a ball game in this situation. Doesn't generally happen. Billy Butler does ground into a lot of double plays. He's going to take ball one. Many times you'll see a manager bring his closer into a tie ball game in the ninth. If you're the home team. Not generally on the road. Swing and a miss. Fastball that time by him. Only at 85 miles an hour. <laughs> Lee Butler's granted into seven double plays. Tied for the most in the American League. 
tied for third most in the majors. He's had a nice night tonight, but that was the worry with Butler when they got him here. They paid him a big contract. Hit a lot of ground balls. It's a fly ball here down the right field line. Jackie Bradley Jr. over towards the line. Will make the catch for the second out of the ninth inning. So two down and Steven Vogt coming up. With a double back in the fifth inning, had a sack fly, a couple of RBIs in this game. And he takes strike one. One for one with a solo home run in his career against Koji Uihara. Goes Pedroia in comes Jackie Bradley Jr. and he put it away. We're headed for bonus baseball tonight in Oakland with the score tied four to four. Jack Link's beef jerky, feed your wild side. Four to four the score as we head to the 10th inning as Koji Ihara made pretty quick work of uh, the Oakland A's, the two batters he faced, Butler and Vote. And it is Justin Pedroia leads it off in the 10th inning. Clifford back on the mound. Pitch the ninth back out there for the tenth. Nobody warming in the Oakland A's pen. David Ortiz and Hanley Ramirez expected here in the tenth inning. Two and zero. Oh. Those two pitches have not been close. Good guy to have at the plate. Dustin Pedroia leading off this inning. None of these have been close. 3 0. Oh. Pretty sure he won't be swinging at this one.
That was ball four. Closest of all four pitches, but a leadoff walk for Pedroia to begin the tenth inning. Well, Nesson is looking for youth baseball and softball teams to be a live studio audience for Nesson Clubhouse on select Sundays this season. Visit NessonClubhouse.com, look on the studio audience to enter your team. The experience includes a pizza party before and a once in a lifetime opportunity to be an active part of the studio audience. What do you think David's thinking right here? Just through four straight balls. Is he thinking he's got to throw a fastball for a strike right here and I'm going to hammer it? Or is he thinking this guy's clueless and he doesn't know where it's going, so maybe I should take a strike? I think I will take a strike. <laughs> <laughs> You're so quick on your answers and, and right on time with that. I was going to wait to see what he's doing because you know what? I have no idea what David Ortiz well, is thinking. Too much change up right there, too. Drops in there for a strike. One and one. First strike he's thrown. Hold on to first base by Canna. Check on him. Proceed over to first base. Yes, he did. Off walk to Pedroia to begin the tenth inning. How many times in this situation have we seen Big Poppy come through huge? Side for ball two. So these are two hits in the game, a single and a double. As Hanley Ramirez waits on deck. He also has an RBI's 13th of the season. Ortiz pops it a foul back and out of play. You almost caught that one, didn't you? I'm sure there's going to be a ricochet. That ball probably wasn't a strike either. Change ups away and fastballs up and in to David Ortiz. First pitch, all three, full count. Up and down the middle. One side <laughs> or the other. Nothing over the plate. Three two change up. Runner goes. Ortiz swings and sends it out towards right center field. Over is Burns to make the catch. And Petroya has got to race back to first. He'll get there. So a fly out to right center field with Pedroia on the run as Ortiz is the first out of the tenth inning. Ortiz right on that pitch. 3 2 change up. Hits it into the gap. Not just enough mustard on it to get it out of here or into the gap for a hit. One out, Pedroia still at first. Here's Hanley Ramirez. Hanley has walked, struck out, flight out to center, flight out to right. Ramirez hits a high fly ball to left field. Coco Crisp waiting on it. They'll make the catch for the second out of the tenth inning, and Pedroia cannot advance again. Well, so far, leadoff walk has not been a problem. Two down. Now, 
Two down, Pedroia at first, and Mike Napoli the batter. He's lined out to right, walked twice, and struck out. That call appeared to be a little bit outside. This one will get away, and Pedroia will move up now in the scoring position with two down. This is a ball that shouldn't get away from you. You know it's been a long night back there, but you got to move your feet and get in front of that one. Wild pitch charge to Clipper here, two down. Roy in scoring position. One strike to Mike Napoli. Watch Nap's approach here. He had a good at bat earlier in his ball game where he lined one to right field. Lots of change ups out of Clipper. One ball, two strikes to Mike Napoli. Let's go ahead, run at second base. Napoli lines it to first base, and Canna's there to make the catch. So the Red Sox can't get the runner in. We head to the bottom of the 10th, tied 4-4. Know how can do. TC and Adam will have complete post game coverage of tonight's game in Oakland. A reaction to the NFL dropping the hammer on the Patriots today. It's on to the bottom of the 10th inning in a 4 4 ball game. The Sox using their seventh pitcher of the game now. It's half orange into the game. Third appearance. Got a record of 2.70 earned run average. Two strikeouts a walk. An opponent sitting at 375. Against Barnes, Sui Hara ended up getting the two batters he faced in the ninth. Butler and Vogt. Mark Canna to lead it off here for the Oakland A's. Resides in Bethel, Connecticut during the offseason. First round draft choice, 19th overall by the Red Sox in 2011. As Canna takes ball one. Barnes for 
second inning and th a third in Toronto on Saturday's ball game. Getting used to that role coming out of the pen. Swing and a miss, a 95 mile an hour fastball by him. So all that is left now in the Red Sox pen is Stephen Wright. Hard stuff again, but too low. Bottom of the tenth inning. And then with a swing and a miss. Fastball. But by him again. To the right. Do it again here. Three and two. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming up. They're being drafted, Matt Barnes, out of the University of Connecticut. So played for Wareham of Cape Cod League. Following it straight back. Santa made an outstanding defensive play to end that last inning. We were hoping that Napoli would maybe shorten up, try to go to right field. He did exactly that, hit a bullet that way. Santa was well off the first baseline and made a nice grab. Similar to the one Napoli made early. Off walk here for Canna. Show you some of the sweet defense that we've seen all night tonight. Starting with Coco Crisp up against the wall off of the, the bat of Pedroia. Then that nice play by Napoli that saved a couple of runs. How about the play by Muncy? Bang! Little Richter scale right there as he came down. Reddick up against the wall. And then that play we just talked about off the bat of Napoli saved a run. Or it takes the strike. Charging from the corners. Glory attempts to get Hannah into scoring position here. Nobody out of the tenth. It may take a shot at getting that out at second if Panda charges hard enough and Napoli can get in. And he fouls it off, so unable to get it done. Two sacrifice bunts this year for Brett Lorry. Down 0 2 in the count. Should be trying to bunt the ball to the right side now with two strikes. May not be bunting at all. Close pitch. To take after you fail to get a bump down. The first base back to the bag is Canna. That's a winning run at first base for the A's here in the 10th inning.
Mookie Betts coming in. Makes the catch for the first out of the tenth inning. McKenna back to first, and Lori could not move the runner along. Didn't get the bunch down on two occasions. Ends up flying out. One down brings up Marcus Simeon. Simeon 0 for 4 in the game. He's flat out to center, grounded into a 6 4 3 double play in each of the last two times up. Striking out swinging. Gallego reeling off the signs. Going anywhere. Check swing foul off to the right. Two down. Can't believe they really had to check on this one. That's a full swing. <laughs> Would have been a double if he hit it. So two down. And it brings up Eric Sogard. Well, Red Sox had a leadoff walk in the top half of the inning. And they get Pedroia beyond second base. Leadoff walk in this inning. Canna, he's still standing at first here with two down. There he goes. Sogard will take a pitch for a strike throw down. It's going to be not in time and a stolen base. As one of Bogarts thought they had him, and Farrell has stepped out of the dugout here. Uh, I don't think he came off the bag. That would be your only complaint there. Clearly beats the throw. Bogarts has learned quickly and done a very good job of keeping that tag on the runner the entire time. Base stealers come off the base quite a bit these days because they slide too far over the bag. So in scoring position now is Canna with two outs in the inning. Sogard has had a two hit night already. Strike. I really think Cannon was going anywhere before two outs. After two outs, decided to try to get himself into scoring position. Not sure if Barnes really was holding him on all that closely. Two and one. Burns waiting on deck. The guard asked for time. Barnes taking a long time. So guard grounds it foul. It evens a count of two and two. Today is coming into this game, losing their last five straight games.
Sogard hits a fly ball to shallow left. Out goes Bogarts. It comes Ramirez, and it is Bogarts who makes the catch that ends the 10. We head to the 11th inning, tied 4 to 4. Jack Lake's beef jerky feeds your wild side. Now back in Oakland where the game tied 4-4 to the top of the 11th inning. And Angel Castro is the new pitcher now for the Oakland A's. Second appearance. He's got two-thirds of an inning so far for the A's. As Castro called up from AAA Nashville on Friday, made his major league debut on Saturday. In his 10th professional season. Took a while to get here. <laughs> See what the Red Sox can do to give him an unwelcome welcoming. Blue Sandoval is going to lead it off. And Jackie Bradley Jr. And Xander Bogart scheduled to bat in the inning. Castro taking over for Tyler Clipper. We're two innings giving up a hit. Walked a batter. Mikey Bradley Jr. took over defensively for Shane Victorino at right field. He's not yet batted in this game. Sign of all 0 for 4 in the game tonight. Batting for the second time from the left side. Swing and a miss and a pitch down and in the dirt. Now we know Sandoval has no problem swinging the bat. He's a good bad ball hitter. Over towards the corner goes Reddick, and that ball is gone. Home run for Pablo Sandoval. Gives the Red Sox a 5 4 lead in the 11th inning. Now the Panda returning to the Bay Area as a member of the Red Sox. Put the Red Sox on top of the 11th. Now well, the Red Sox were a late arrival into town, at least East Coast time from where they came from. And right about now, 24 hours ago, when it was on Larry Bear and Bruce Bochy, the manager of the San Francisco Giants, met Sandoval in the lobby of the hotel and handed him his World Series ring. And now he goes deep. He's starting to hit, just heat it up from the left side, especially with the power numbers. Right handed, a different story. Uh, 
Jackie Bradley Jr. After swinging at a couple pitches that were nowhere near the strike zone, and then he just blasted that one out of there. And Jackie Bradley Jr. walks on four pitches down to first base. Red Sox now trying to obtain some insurance. Kurt Young headed out to the mound here to talk to Castro. One more look. Pretty much carbon copy of the one he hit in Toronto, too. Just a line drive right out of here. Batting here with Bradley Jr. at first base. Now on to this one run lead here in the 11th. Bogart squaring gets it down as the first baseman can looked at second but throws to first with Sogard covering and the sacrifice is complete three to four as Bradley moves to second base. And the plate Swihart coming up. Nice job, really technically sound. Bogey is when he bunts the ball, gets us down, maybe a teeny bit hard, but no big deal. No chance of getting the guy at second base. First sacrifice bunt this year for Bogarts. And Blake Swihart coming up. Two hit game from the number nine spot in the order for Swihart. Doubling in the fifth, singling in the seventh, scoring twice. Two hit game in Blake Swihart's career. There'll be more of those to come. Strike called and it evens at one and one. Looking ahead to the bottom of the 11th inning. Billy Burns, Coco Crisp, Josh Reddick, one, two, and three. Anybody gets on, Billy Butler. Will have a chance. And Matt Barnes said he will be the pitcher again for the Red Sox. That's why Hart fouls it off to the left out of play. Striking out a big strike out there for Castro. It is the second out here the 11th. Swihart upset with himself not really because he struck out but because of the pitch that he struck out on. It's kind of a backup hang and breaking ball and Swihart's lighting up thinking I'm going to crush this thing. And he didn't get it. Bets two hits, two RBIs in this game. As he takes ball one. Two. 
Two balls, no strikes to Mookie Betts. With two down, a runner at second base, and Jackie Bradley Jr. as Castro stepped off. I think the whole league knows that you can't just throw a 2 0 fastball, especially middle end to Mookie Betts with a 2 0 count. You're better off trying, if you want to get him out, you better go away from him in this situation. In at 94. <laughs> they were trying to go away, and he threw that up and in. All three, three and one. It back. The fastball was up in the zone and fouled it back. I think 3 2. Mookie still feels like he's going to get a fastball to hit right here. And it's ball four. Bets down to first base. Second walk here allowed by Castro. This is the seventh walk given up in this game by Oakland pitching. So two on, two outs, and Dustin Pedroia coming up. Dustin looking for his first hit of the night, although he's been on three times. Walking twice, reaching on a fielder's choice. Teams have been trading runs back and forth, trading the lead back and forth. The only two run inning was the Red Sox in the fifth, where they got two. Pedroia takes strike one. Talked about how important. The first two games of this series would be just because of who was pitching with Kazmir tonight. And then Pomerantz tomorrow. Sonny Gray is the pitcher on Wednesday, and he's just nasty. Not like you can't beat him. <laughs> but you're in a lot better situation if you win the first two games heading into that one. What's his ERA? 1.6 something ugly. Blowing everyone away. 1.67 for Sonny Gray so far this year. Woo! On the outside corner. Gray didn't like it, but he's down one and two. He didn't think so. Gray's like, I know it's late, but I've got to be here too. So do you. Let's go. On the ground up the middle and is diving at second base. Sogard, he'll throw to third base and at third out. Jackie Bradley Jr. rounded third base. Throw goes in that direction and they get him after he rounded the bag. Pablo Sandoval has put the Red Sox on top five to four.
Red Sox are looking for more and unable to get it here. Now this is kind of a mistake made, but it's hard to point the finger at anybody. Sogar with a great defensive play here. Jackie Bradley Jr. comes around third a little too aggressively. You could see Brian Butterfield in the picture there trying to tell him to stay on third base to get back. Well, that's a tough thing. If you're coming around third, you know you got to try to score. But I think the thing that JBJ should realize that that ball was hit so slowly if it did get up the middle. You see Butterfield right there telling JBJ stay on the base. If that ball does trickle through, JBJ can pretty much walk home. So you don't have to be that aggressive around third base. Lee Burns leading it off here and swinging at the first pitch, loops it down, foul ground, and chasing his Sandoval to no avail. Second inning of relief here for Matt Barnes as Billy Burns leads it off. Coco Crispin and Josh Reddick. It's funny down on that play. It's almost JBJ was almost a victim of getting a great jump. He had a good secondary lead. He got a great jump on the ball. He knows there's two out, so he's he's running no matter what. So he got to third base fairly quickly, and it's a tough call for Brian Butterfield because the play hadn't been made yet. Only Ramirez there to make the catch for the first out of the 11th inning. So Burns retired. They're playing it over in that direction anyway. He's kind of guarding the line and left and. Luki Betts was there in case, but Hanley makes the catch. <laughs> we saw Hanley make a catch while he was standing in their bullpen earlier tonight. <laughs> way over there a few times. One out for Coco Crisp. 0 for 5 tonight, 0 for his last 20. F. If you feel like in this game that Coco Crisp has come up like six times in the game, that's because he has. <laughs> Ball, shallow right, Pedroia going out. Calling and catching the second out of the 11th inning. Crucial, quick first two outs. Now tomorrow, Drew Pomerantz against Justin Masterson. Play night baseball tomorrow, day baseball on Wednesday. And you're talking about Sonny Gray. All he's done is gone 4 0. 1.65 earned run average against Wade Miley, 1 and 4. Two down here in the 11th inning. Josh Reddick on base four times in this game. Two walks, two singles, and a score to run. Reddick to left field. Hanley Ramirez is there, and the Red Sox win. So Boston able to beat the Oakland A's in 11 innings tonight. Five to four first major league victory for the Connecticut native Matt Barnes. As the Red Sox win this one in 11 innings Pablo Sandoval the difference his home run in the top of the 11th inning. Red Sox needed this and are now two and two on the trip after dropping the first two games in Toronto. So again, the final 11 innings, five to four. The Red Sox win this one. It's time now for Nesson Sports today.